Welcome back to Phantom Hourglass. The last time we went to the ghost ship, we found Tetra, such as she is. <laughs> so now we need to figure out how to get her back. First, it's going to require us going back to that blacksmith we met earlier. He literally told us, you're here too early, so now's the time. <laughs> and now that you're back, I need to chisel her. She needs abs. <laughs> Puts the, the, the screwdriver in, and then he hits it once and she turns into rubble. Well... That will be 500 rupees. You know we don't. We can leave him behind. <laughs> we can kick him off the ship. Hey, we can take the ship. I mean, we basically know how to run it. Piece of Joe can control it from the bow. <laughs> I'll have you know that if you throw me overboard, the ship will sink with me. That doesn't make any sense, but okay. Actually, you know, it's, of course, this is the line back I'm talking about, but, like, wouldn't it be something if, like, during the game, like, you left and you came back and he's just, like, painting all of the areas on Tetra, like, look, she's good as new. <laughs> I saw Pleasantville, it's in reverse. <laughs> By which I mean I put the cassette tape in and I hit rewind and it was quite an experience. There's got to be a sword. Of course. I don't, although the it being called Phantom Sword is pretty cool. And I always thought he was really interesting because he very clearly looks like Ganon, but he's not. Like more of a thin fisherman version. <laughs> it's like Ganondorf if he retired and he was actually a nice guy. You don't need my help, you need my directions. <laughs> Kinda makes me wonder if they had other plans for him outside of just being a blacksmith. Maybe. He is kind of shoehorned in. He doesn't actually help us, he just points us to the painting in the back of the house. I need you to go point there, and then Pizza Joe runs into the wall. No, I don't think he's not joking. I don't think he knows what the concept of, like, humor or laughter is. Also, coloring and browning. <laughs> Redding, blueing. So the second half of the game is finding the pure metals. It's not any different from how it was going here. It's just... What we're calling the thing we collect has changed. <laughs> well, I mean, I always did like the concept of forging the sword, and I do like that since we're way too far from the Master Sword, we need a new powerful sword. Yeah. Unless the Master Sword just somehow manages to float its way to the top. We're not seeing that thing. We embedded it deep in that forehead. <laughs> And we're still in a, maybe, parallel dimension? You don't know anything about that symbol. I know you, you know nothing. <laughs> but I do have the symbol. It's not just drawing the Triforce, you have to do it in one single stroke. And that looks really bad on the DS screen. <laughs> I think that puzzle actually took me a while, if I remember correctly. It's harder than it looks, especially since the tactile feedback isn't great. <laughs> We're the desperate ones, yeah. Sorry, Lineback. One day you'll have a friend. Don't know who. But first, we're gonna go back to the seafarer. I 
I get the feeling that's what this letter's- Oh no, it's what? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking lazy- Okay, look, kid, I can't tell it to your face, but I gotta tell you somehow. <laughs> you make me sick. <laughs> that's all I wrote on there. P.S. Blah! Parentheses, that's me puking. Anyway, you're alright. Bye. <laughs> I do think it's kind of funny, though. Like, he doesn't want to admit it, so I'm just gonna write it to you. But he could have just handed it to him. Instead, he said, I'm gonna write it, then mail it. So I stole this. I want you to have it. <laughs> yeah, Lineback, about gifts, um... That looks like a clam that you just attached to a broken chain. Gosh, snake. <laughs> P.S. Snake. It's gonna be near your foot. Oh, hello. No, don't... <laughs> Pizza Joe! Now I've caught a mermaid. <laughs> so last time we got a letter from Jolene talking about her sister. And, well, here she is. She dresses up like a mermaid. That's such a douchey response. There's, sorry, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Just do a boomerang at her. I mean, I do like her response to that. Like, there's a guy out there who thinks I'm a mermaid? Well, tough shit. What do you want me to do? <laughs> like, I'm not... I'm not his mom. Initially, she talks to Lineback, and she's not impressed. Well, nobody's impressed. Look, saying it doesn't make it true. <laughs> You're the guy who left your wife and son, right? I think romance ain't in ya. Romance? Friendships? Family? Yeah, none of those things are a part of you. Being a good dad certainly isn't. Oh, no, sorry, I was deaf for the last eight minutes. Yes, I know what we're doing. You can't even break to say his name. <laughs> you think old fuck was who he was talking about? <laughs> hey, you think peg leg and useless can uh, figure out if we're going to be going the right place or... Oh yeah, I could attract girls by accident. <laughs> Puts a finger in, in his index finger and his thumb under his chin, and he's like, I'm sorry that I bumped into you. Have we met? Just being a mermaid was my only guidelines. <laughs> it was a very easy dream. The mermaid of my dreams! I've never dreamed this would happen! About what you just said. To thank you, have an annoying minigame. Okay, I will say this. In Wind Waker, there was no fishing. That was a bit of a missed opportunity, so is this like their way of making it up? I guess so. Unfortunately, it sucks. Oh. The fishing itself is fine. It's the fact that a heart container is hidden behind it, and it's RNG-based. Plus, the whistling that comes through his teeth is very soothing. <laughs> he keeps trying to feed me goldfish, but it's... Like, they're, they're great crackers, I guess, but they get wet. <laughs> He thinks they t he thinks that I like them better that way. Oh, 
And drops it in the water. <laughs> and the old guy's like, oh, so you read underwater, I see. No, I can't read now. I'm the non-judgy one. Like, when she was a pirate, I didn't judge. I said, go do your thing, and then I said, I'll be a mermaid, and she said, that's stupid, I hate you. And now we only communicate through letters. Yeah. One time I got a letter from Linepick. Now that we've got the fishing pole, the shadows of fish will appear on the map. They will keep moving, so you're going to have to kind of tail them. But once you get close, you can activate the fishing minigame. There's only a handful of fish, but quite a few of them are annoyingly rare. See, Jolene's on the prowl. Now she's getting close. She could crash into that boat first. We're trying to get a fish. It's been one episode since our last encounter. Come on, fish. Come on, fish. Come on. Ow. Oh, damn it. I was hoping, like, you get to the fish and that, like, cancels her, like, entire thing. I think you can, but I didn't do it in time. You can actually go into the fishing minigame a lot farther away from the fish than you'd think. As long as when you go in the menu, the fishing symbol is colored in, that means you can activate it. But, same old fight. But now we have a Tetra, you know, to, to watch out for. <laughs> if we need to block some sword swings, we can just grab Tetra and put her in front of us. Jolene really isn't fun to fight. And she shows up way too often. Yeah, I remember that being a thing. Ah, uh, chew! <laughs> Bless you? Remember this day that we won? I will. <laughs> Did you leave your sword again? Now we have two. Oh, I thought he was going to give me advice. <laughs> it was going to be a letter addressed to Pizza Joe, and he was going to say, Can you go to the post office real quick? <laughs> well, luckily, the fish is still there. The map is the only indicator you get where the fish is. That's a pretty big fishing rod there, Pizza Joe. The fish will come right to the line. It's probably another one of those mini games that shoehorned in the touchscreen, because it had to. Yeah, that would explain why he threw it all the way to Nebraska. So now, the lineback's just going to tell us anyway. But it's a combination of spinning your stylus around like you're reeling and pulling it back. When you pull it back, the meter off to the side will rise up into green. That means that you can spin the stylus and you'll reel in the fish, but then the meter's going to drop down into the red. If it drops down the red, you're going to lose the fish. So as you reel it and the meter goes down, when it gets low, stop reeling and pull back on the stylus. That'll let the meter rise back up into green, and then you can start spinning and reel fish in close again. I tend to get about four to five yards a cycle. If it's a really small fish, I can maybe get more, but that tends to be the average. There will also be cases, especially with bigger fish, where they'll jump out of the water, in which case you need to take the stylus off of the screen. It's like giving the rod slack, because if you don't do that, then you'll also lose the fish. It's kind of a balancing act. It's not a hard mini game, but the fact that what fish you get is mostly RNG based does quite get in the way. They really shouldn't have hidden the heart container behind this. <laughs> Skippy Jack. <laughs> All of that for a tiny little fish. They get quite harder. <laughs> yeah, I see what they were trying to go for touch screen and all. Like, it could be kind of neat, but if every fish takes that long. No, every fish takes longer. Oh, good. Skippy Jacks are the easy one. They're also common. And unfortunately, you need to catch one of every fish in order to get the heart container. So that means hoping that RNG gets you the rare fish. 
And uh, how many fish types are there? Just like five or six. Okay, well that's not too, too bad. You're saying that having not done it. I remember playing it like once. Forever ago, but uh... <laughs> the RNG is so bad. Oh, I believe you. You're only gonna see the Skippy Jacks and maybe this guy. It took me hours in order to finish it. Oof. Yeah, I, I can believe you that, because tr trust me, I've had my fair share of RNG. <laughs> Luvar, he's big though. Okay, I think it's clever that they actually put it on the hook. I got lucky though, I found the rare tiny guy. Ooh! Occasionally you'll find a stowfish on the underside of a Luvar. And I got it first try. That's great! The game must have felt a little sorry for you, because it made you do it so many times. I was gonna say, that's a big fi- oh, that's a chest. <laughs> that's a big whale carcass. <laughs> Put that on the list. How does it fit, though, is my question. <laughs> there will pretty much always be a fish shadow on every quadrant of the map. So, and they respawn pretty quickly. So they're on different quadrants, but there's still a heavy chance that you're just going to encounter the first two common ones. Pretty much. Maybe a third one, but the really big fish are rare. You need to catch all except for one in order to get another fishing rod that allows you to catch the final fish. But the other fish still spawn in. Also, hello. <laughs> hey, buddy. I don't think you need to fight this guy. I think the door- the, uh, yeah, the exit is open. You can just go, but Pizza Joe likes uh, to get his hands dirty a little bit. I mean, he's caught like a million fish right now, so seeing a fish hybrid with a sword just made him antsy. Ooh, this again. We need to shine a light. But first, treasure. Good treasure. I have questions, but all right. <laughs> 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 oh, Pizza Joe. Took me a second to figure out what to do. You just need to tap it again. Then you can move it around. This is another one of, like, uh, where you, like, guide the light and... Do you have to dig anything, or...? Yeah, it points you to a wall that we need to bomb. Ooh. For some reason, I thought you might need to shovel here. Oh no, that was a different puzzle. Yeah, we don't use the shovel that much by this point. I mean, I guess every Zelda game needs its filler item. Hang on, this doesn't seem right. Big bridge and there's nothing around there? Aha! <laughs> Thought you had me this time, huh? Water. I found a thing, so I'm brave. <laughs> they say nobody ever do it, but uh, they thought nobody'd be stupid enough to go for it. Bravery and stupid's the same thing, right? Now, this is an interesting little secret that you cannot do anything with anymore. Blonk. <laughs> Riedel. Friedel here was the DS online thing. This allowed you to trade parts and treasures with other people. You could probably still do it in person, but you can't do it online. Oh, it was old classic Nintendo Wi-Fi. Yep. 
The one with the blue button on it. What was it called? Oh, NFC. Yeah. <laughs> I like the little gimmick, but I just like to think he strums once and he just says all those words. Yeah. Well, don't forget about him, though. We need to actually come back to him for another treasure later. It's a shame. There's probably plenty of characters like him in, like, plenty of DS games that unfortunately just have no function now. Or next to no function these days. I mean, I wouldn't have used them anyway. <laughs> it's nice that it's there. Now that I've got the arrows, the shop at Murkay Island sells a bigger quiver. Thousand rupees, huh? Well, I mean, it's easy to get money. And with the bigger quiver, it seems appropriate to go back to the shooting gallery. Break this real quick, so about your dad. Now, I got the big reward last time. And I'm still not great at this. Shit. <laughs> you have infinite arrows, right? Yeah. Okay. But if you miss one, you lose your combo. Right. I think for this, I actually need to get just under the high score, though. So I think that was the thing I missed. I wish if you failed somehow, the little mural at the back changed the arrow from being through the apple to through his head. <laughs> I was hoping that if you hit his nose, you got like bonus points automatically. Like, oh, way to go, uh, piercing my nose, that's an extra thousand there, boy, Pizza Joe. And you're banned. <laughs> How dare you, that's me. Me if I had a huge nose and Pizza Joe raises a finger and pokes his nose. Hundred seventy under. For that, we get another quiver upgrade. Cool. And I think that's the last one. Alright. <laughs> yeah, screw your game, buddy. Got what we came for. I already gave you too many rupees. <laughs> Shut up. I bet he thought he was really clever for that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to make waves, Pizza Joe's left the building. Powerful waves. <laughs> Dives into the ocean. <laughs> Wait, I can't swim. I don't have my cane. I'll learn! <laughs> now let's see if we can upgrade any of our spirit friends. Just enough. The upgraded Spirit of Power is probably the most useful. And I have no memory of this area at all. I don't think I did this at all. I think I just collected the Force Gems and I didn't realize that there were four. So now we can equip the Spirit to our sword. He adds flames to our sword and makes it more powerful. Oh, that's really cool. I would have loved that if I did that. Then again, I only played Phantom Hourglass once. Getting a little clingy there, Sila. Can the other spirits take care of you like I can? <laughs> you don't do anything for me. Yeah, so I think we're like twice as strong now. Do you automatically light torches because of the flames on your sword? Nah, it's just a signifier that you're stronger. Aww. Still cool looking, though. 
The spirit of wisdom would increase your defense. That was smart. <laughs> and Sila adds a different ability. I think she actually gives you the ability to do the laser beams. The sword or beams. The sword beams, yeah. Missed that last time I was here. <laughs> I mean, I did like Pizza Joe's digging into Chu Strat. Trying to put him into grave early. It's a wooden handle. <laughs> Guess it wasn't good enough. I want another gem. Listen, Madam Scamard, I mean, nice lady. Not your ears. Or your nose, or your eyes. Some of these gems are just slightly obtuse to get. I mean, how do you guess that once you've got the Spirit of Wisdom, you go back here and she just gives you a gem? Or even with Oceus. Yeah, that seems like something I would need to, I would have needed a guide for. <laughs> I feel like I'm waiting for Jolene or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, if anything, I mean, this is a good way to get your money back. Yeah. Spent a lot this episode. I feel like I started, like, at a hundred or something. Yeah, I was gonna say, now that I've successfully blew them up 411 times, I'm ready to go. But we're back at Zaz's place, because where there are cuckoos, there is a gap we can jump. With another gem. Thank you, smart cuckoo. Still not enough to upgrade the Spirit of Wisdom, but we'll get there. Well, it was a nice little uh, deviation to just go around and clear some things up. I mean, the Fire Sword, that's, I, that was actually surprising to me. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, and it's really useful. And I also saw that it said level 1, so I'm assuming either... Well, since it's just a detail thing. Like, I'm assuming, like, uh, you raise the level of the things, the sword gets stronger. What it is, is there are 20 of each gems, so you level up the spirits twice. Ah, okay. But they do get additional abilities when you level them up the second time. Well, that's really cool. Really wish I knew that. Because <laughs> I just went through the whole game with just the base sword. Well, swords that weren't like... Well, just the plot. Everything that I did was just main story. Yeah. But next time, gotta go back to the Temple of the Ocean King. Hooray. Temple of Grandpa, I guess. <laughs> Temple of King Grandpa. Temple of the Drowning Man. <laughs> Temple of the Liar, who thinks he makes killer jokes. Like a killer whale. Do, do you get it, Pizza Joe? I, I don't want to, 